let's make some lures. So these are some shad lures that I've purchased. I'd like more of them, but I'm a regular guy. I have a wife, I have children, and I have a very tight budget. I don't have any throw around money, and I can't afford to just be purchasing these whenever I want them. So I've learned how to make my own lures for a fraction of cost. And I'd like to share that technique with you. I've used a lot of different methods to make a soft plastic injection molds, uh, molds for different types of lures. Um, and the problem I found with them is they are all extremely expensive. This technique that I've come up with, it is not perfect, but I have tweaked it so that I can get very decent results, very consistent results, and not spend a lot of money, which makes my wife happy. And for you married gentlemen, you know that a happy wife makes for a happy life. So first thing is I take this mold box that I've made so that I get a consistent level mold every time. It's made in America, which is great. Um, I've coated this with polyurethane and it screws together right here, right here, right here, right here, and along the bottom so that uh, the plaster of Paris doesn't stick to it, except for apparently where you see it stuck to it. So first thing is I'll arrange these fish in here and see how they fit in the mold and see if I like their spacing. Um, but another thing I like to use is a lot of times you'll see a sprue uh, put in the mold that's where the soft plastic is going to be injected with your soft plastic injector, right? Uh, that sprue creates a lot of waste. So I always try to incorporate, incorporate a, another soft plastic that I'd like to use. Here I have a shad, a smaller shad that I have uh, uh, carved myself. It has a hook slot in it uh, in the mold master. Um, and then I have made another piece of this same popsicle stick basically uh, that I put in the mold and you'll see that at the end here so that this one has a hook slot. So we can put that in and use that as a sprue. We can go this way with it for these shad. So now we know that those shad will fit. They'll fit our purpose. Our next step is going to be to mix up the plaster of Paris and uh, we're going to put it in this mold. So I'm not sponsored by DAP Plaster of Paris. Uh, I'd like to be. But, uh, you know, maybe in another life. So, but for now, as far as for the money, uh, this product right here purchased at uh, Wally World, for example, is about $4. Um, and you can make many, many molds with this. Uh, whereas other products, um, you go to that famous hobby store. So in here at the certain hobby stores, uh, this stuff runs about $25. $16, $18, and that's enough to make uh, about one mold or so. So that's a lot of loot where I come from. And that plaster here. It's $11.99. And that is $7.99. $7.99. $7 that's $8. But with this plaster of Paris, you can actually get a very nice looking two part injectable mold. This one here is a lure that I made myself. It's a double twister tail that I use for jigs. It does catch bass. This is two part injection mold and it makes three twister tails each time. Uh, I just talked about using a fishing lure for a sprue. This one uh, proves that I'm a liar because I don't have one on this one. But uh, other molds I do. This is a swimming worm mold that I've made here. And uh, you can see I've made one of the cavities is, a, um, is another mold. So each time you press, each time you inject this, this mold right here, you're going to get five worms 
one of them is the sprue and it cuts off right there. So yes, there is a little bit of uh, a nub on each one, but uh, I've asked every single bass that I've caught on it and uh, none of them have had anything bad to say. So, all right. <clears throat> so we straightened up our mold here, uh, how we're gonna have it laid out. So now we're gonna get to mixing. And sometimes it's good to take a picture of this how you want it, uh, just so that you remember when it's time to put the mold back together. Um, one thing that you're going to see is that, you know, you can just touch this to it or it doesn't even have to because after this mold dries, these molds are carvable. You can take these apart and these cavities here, I've uh, enhanced the, the depth of the uh, ribbons on the tails. Uh, I've enhanced these uh, little lines here. Uh, this stuff is completely carvable and shapeable after the fact, after you let it dry. I've coated this mold with um, also with polyurethane um, so that the soft plastic doesn't stick to it and it comes out of the mold a lot easier. So we're going to take these out. Um, the edges of this mold here I'm going to coat with a thin layer of get these tools here petroleum jelly just in the corners here the assistant is going to help me apparently And all this does, this isn't for mold release. This is just, this kind of acts just like a little barrier um, to block any of the leakage. Uh, if you tighten it down well enough, it shouldn't leak, shouldn't leak out. But this just ensures that that won't happen, that it won't be a problem. So any extra, you can just spread it on the sides to help out. So, fill that with water. Yes, sir. There's instructions on here somewhere. Um, but the one thing that's neat about this stuff is it's extremely forgiving. Forgiving. So it says that it is uh, takes about 30 minutes to get hard, and you have about six to ten minutes of working time. And I found that to be true. Um, haven't had a problem with that. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. So these cups here, this is about the standard amount that I use. Um, I have made a line on this box right here um, to show me where about halfway in the mold is. Uh, you can find this in your kitchen drawer or silverware drawer when your wife's not home. Again, not advanced tools, so we don't need, don't need any advanced tooling here or anything like that. So we just mix this around until we're sure that it's completely saturated. And you want to get the consistency of uh, soft serve ice cream. Well, a little looser than soft serve ice cream. <laughs> so as you can see, we're going to need a little more than that. Actually, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Scrape the rest of it in. <clears throat> okay, so one of the problems people say with the plaster of Paris and certain molds is there is bubbles. And as you can see, there is bubbles in there. 
So here is the trick to get rid of the bubbles. Uh -huh. This is my handy dandy air compressor. Mm -hmm. And if my assistant will turn it on, this yes, is going to get sir. loud for a minute. I won't subject you to four minutes of that noise. Um, this is how long it takes it to fill up. But just the vibration of your air compressor, if you set this down on top of it here, it works those bubbles right out. So we do that for just a few minutes and we'll be right back. All right, so now that we've worked out the bubbles, let's lay in our lures here that we're gonna mold. So we're gonna start with our, our sprue. Here is the rest of the sprue that we're going to use. Again, like I said, it was a fish that we already made, that we've already used, that we've already tested, but that way we get another one of those shad every single time we press this mold. So this part here, you just want to make sure that you lift those paddle tails up. All right. So this kind of tail, this tail went down just a little bit, but not to worry. With the help of our friendly tweezers, just like you're playing the game operation, you can lift it out and set it up just the way you want it. Now, like I said, this doesn't have to be exactly touching. We can correct all of that after the fact, okay? Now, we need some locators in here. These are some plastic marbles. Uh, you can find these in your child's marble set when they're not home and they won't mind a bit. So we'll put these in, space these about. Are you going to put one right there? Yes, sir. I'd love to. Okay. So if your son puts it in the wrong spot, just ever so slightly, you can move it over. Just like that. And now we're going to let that set up. All right, good morning. We're back for the exciting conclusion of the saga of the two-part mold. We get to see if this is going to be successful or not. I had to pause last night because uh, life got in the way, but that's all right. So our mold has had plenty of time to set up. And uh, you'll see there's a little bit of imperfections with just a little bit of uh, where the plaster landed. But I'll show you that and I'll show you how to take care of that. Again, it's very forgiving. So I can just brush away all those pieces. So a little bit here on the tail. Some little happy trees with it. thin layer just brushes right away all right another important thing to do is remove these marbles sometimes they there we go get a little deep in there need a little persuasion to get out but there we go so those are our locators I'm gonna dump these crumbs out Brush it out like so. Just brush it out. There we go. Okay. So the um, the fish have set. Um, the mold looks pretty darn good. Very little bubbles. There's some little bubbles around the edges. That'll happen, but that's all right. Uh, it's not affecting where the where the mold is here. So again, we have our petroleum jelly. This is acts as our mold release. So the edges again and the seams of the mold here so we don't have any spillage. I give the sprue a generous coating. But we're just going to brush the whole mold with this right here. Now 
you can brush your uh, your lure with it. You are going to get uh, a little bit of marks made in your mold from the uh, petroleum jelly, but uh, you'll see we can uh, take care of that later. It may not matter. So. check back in with you when I'm done here all right so I completed the mold release uh, step here we've put Vaseline or uh, sorry we have put petroleum jelly non descript proprietor of that uh, product uh, on the entire mold again I've gone over the sprue here uh, I haven't gone over the actual lure with it. Uh, it's touched it a little bit, but you can take off the excess. Just go around those little spots where there's any excess. Scrape it off on the side of the jar here. Uh, in here, you want to get a good amount down in those. Um, the locators so that it uh, makes sure that's where you're going to have, like, areas like that is a area you're going to have that plaster stick to itself if you don't uh, if you don't lubricate it well but uh, you can take out the excess in there if it's uh, when it fills in if it doesn't fill in a hundred percent they uh, still act as a, as a nice locator you'll see how that all works here all right so that looks pretty darn good and you can spend as much time as you want nitpicking that and I'm gonna continue to try not to lean over uh, I'm new at this so please forgive the less than stellar quality of this production. All right. So that step's finished. Now we're back to mixing up plaster. Again, I have my two cups. Um, my wife was throwing these out. And, uh, I reallocated them for outdoor projects. Probably shouldn't be doing that or dumping that right over my project there, but again, um, I've just figured out that uh, pretty much a majority of the cup here is enough plaster for this project. Just through trial and error. You can measure it out. Uh, there's some channels I watch, they do some extremely precise things, and uh, I do appreciate that. I like watching all that, <clears throat> that stuff. Um, but sometimes, you gotta keep it simple. Sometimes you don't have a ton of time to get these projects done and get the results you want, and make the lures that you wanna make. And that's where I find myself often. I don't have hours upon hours. To work out here and every now and then I actually like to get out in a boat and go fishing so all right so that's mixed up and again we pour it over we got an old release in our box is nice and secure and this uh, surface is relatively level Okay, so just wiggle it a little bit. So we're actually going to want to make up a little more. We do want it closer to the top edge of that. That sprue right there is not going to have enough mess uh, mass on the side of it to um, not crack and be distorted. So that's one down. Thank you, Dap. And a wonderful product. But don't worry, we have plenty more where that came from because it's inexpensive. All right, so I have thoroughly shaken and not stirred that mold there to get the bubbles out, but there's still a few that will come out. 
but they're uh, mostly away from at this point from the project which is the important part there so you can you know kind of do this a little bit and feel better about yourself um, also demonstrates the lack of levelness of my mold my mold box but uh, don't worry kids that was by expert design uh, so that it could rock a little bit and let the bubbles out that was absolutely engineered into the uh, building of this mold box it takes a uh, real dedicated precise mind to be able to come up with a you know just the right amount of tipping point hopefully none of you believe that's true um, I did have to open up the new crack open the new can you know fresh plaster so it's satisfying uh, to finish off this to finish off this mold here so this is a very exciting part here so now we're gonna let that set up luckily uh, it's about a hundred degrees out today so it should dry out nicely um, sometimes it is good to put these out in the Sun if you have a nice dry sunny day it will help it um, dry to the optimal uh, dryness faster that sentence doesn't make any sense but that's okay So I'll come back when, when, when this is all dry and we're ready to unbox it and I'll show you what the next uh, few steps are. This is just an example of a top pour mold that I made myself out of um, some uh, parts of other lures and um, one of those things that your kids shoes come on uh, hanging on the rack. I was trying to do like a trying to make my own sort of brush hog looking thing and uh, Carolina rig thing. and. Um, it didn't work, but at least I covered it in plenty of ridiculous sparkles. So I guess that's a sort of uh, Mardi Gras mix, I guess. I don't know what I was trying to go for there. But long story short is I didn't like how it came out, and uh, I don't want it hanging around anymore. So I'll show you what we do with the ones we don't want anymore. So sometimes we have a mold that doesn't make it, and he gets the firing squad. Because we don't need him hanging around in the shop not being used. Ready. Aim. Fire. Got him. All right. So we're back now. <clears throat> um, the mold is dried all the way. And now we can take it out of the mold box. This is the exciting part, right? We should have like a drum roll or something. There's a guy that already does that, though. Helps if you go backwards there. Save the pieces. Use my fancy dancy magnetical <clears throat> nut and bolt holder. There's a whole lot of screws in this, but I found that was the only way to keep it from leaking. But if you go easy, they go right back in from whence they came. And then drop it for no reason. go throw that on the floor so you can't get it again okay there's the mold put the mold box aside uh, again that other piece has gone off into oblivion so it'll never be found Ooh, and it just popped right apart like that so Full disclosure, we got a few bubbles in it still, but not too bad. Uh, the sprue lure came up pretty nice, a couple of little defects there, but 
Like I said, we can take care of that mostly, you'll see. Okay, put it right together nice and neatly. Pull out our little pieces here. Pull out the lures. This side looks good. You can actually see a good amount of detail in that as well. And uh, sometimes you need a little persuasion to get that harder stuff out. Grab by the snoot. There we go. So, um, this one still needs a little bit of tweaking before it's completely ready. Um, but you could shoot it now if you wanted to. You could carve this stuff out now if you wanted to. But what I like to do is set it up to let it dry a little more. Like I said, it's like 106 degrees out today. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I use these guys out here. I'm going to set it up in the sun, let it dry for the rest of the day, and um, it should be good to go. Uh, clearly, uh, for those of you at home, I need to work on my uh, how much is half business because it's not quite equal. But it's very level, and that's all that matters. There's enough meat here. Um, that this isn't going to be a problem when we cut it. Sometimes having a little extra, but you can see the locators came out really nice. Even though there's a couple bubbles in there, um, you can't see the brush marks, but fits right together, sandwiches right together, and that's not twisting or doing anything funky. So, all right, all right. So I'm out here in the backyard, and I've got my little um, painters pyramids set up. That allows the airflow all the way around it. Put the other one over here. Set that guy up as well. So again, it's super bright and sunny out. Um, there's still a lot of moisture in these that needs to come out. But this bright, bright sun uh, will make short work of that. So uh, you'll actually, they're, they're you know a little bit heavy right now, and uh, they'll lose. <laughs> it's going to feel like like a, nearly half their weight. It's not a scientific, you know, measurement by any stretch, just from the field there. So, so we'll shoot back here in a bit, um, later this afternoon uh, after they've baked for a bit. All right. This next section here for mold making, we need to clean out these channels so that the plastisol can flow freely. I use a couple of different tools for that. I have a small flathead screwdriver, two different size awls with two different size points on them. And then I have a uh, little safety razor. Uh, this stuff carves extremely easily, so it's not like you need uh, terribly precise tools <coughs> for this. What we wanna do is clean out a path here for the plastisol to flow through. Just scrape it away. Cuts very easily. And blow the dust away. I'm sorry for all the noise. I had to put a fan on here just to uh, help deal with the heat. That's about enough for that one, excuse me. So with very little effort right here, we've carved out enough for the plastisol to get into the first part of the mold. Now we need to just make a little channel at each nose on the shad. This one here as well. Sometimes I like to make a little funnel to it. And this nose is pretty well carved out. One side may be a little easier or deeper than the other, but that's okay. So this one right here, I'm just gonna push through. And then 
when the finished product comes out of the mold, you can just uh, trim off this little piece and the fish will look relatively perfect again. While we're doing this too, if we see any imperfections that we want to remove, we can do that. Just blow away the excess and that's it. So these are pretty small channels in here, but they should be enough. So we just need to remember that when we're applying the plastisol to this mold, we need to apply a little bit of pressure and then you need to hold that pressure and it'll help fill in all the cavities. Sometimes you use a screwdriver just to kind of scrape it, kind of sounds like a turkey call. Is it funny? <laughs> Now these fish, the original lure, had a hook slot, that kind of a channel that went through, and we're not going to use that, so we're just going to cut away that little bit. And that's that. And if we wanted to, we could take this all here and just kind of go around the edges of all these little details in the fins and the gills and such. And just kind of redefine them a little better. Just on either side of the fin rays. think that needs a little more detail you can scrape into it and you can good add stuff if you'd like you can add this is enough it's uh, easy to carve enough you could put in if you wanted to be really intricate you could put in a whole scale pattern if you take your time it's I haven't found that you can really repair it so if you mess it up you've done it This one actually came out rather nice on this side, so I'll just do a little bit. So just kind of put a little whoopsie there. crazy with it. That is probably good enough. So this section right here you'll see we're going to put a um, piece of wood in here that's going to act as a sl hook slot for this fish. This is my homemade shad again. Um, we could carve out and build them for this. We might do that later on. But uh, when they come out of the mold, after you've had them dry for a bit, you can take a straight razor and slice along the bottom if you want a hook slot in it. So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, once you put the hook slot in there, uh, you can make the fish without the hook slot. You know, just let the plastisol go into here and then trim that off. So we want to test this mold out now. Um, so that means we're going to have to apply a coat of petroleum jelly. Um, this, sometimes the plastisol can stick to this plaster here, uh, especially when it's as dry out as this. So uh, I found the petroleum jelly and makes a great mold release, and it's inexpensive, which is one of my favorite things. So my assistant here is going to help with that half of it, and I'm going to help with this half of it. Yes, sir. Uh, we do this now when it's um, not been coated with the poly, uh, polyurethane. Once you coat it with the polyurethane, give it a couple nice coats with that, uh, you don't need to do this step anymore. 
uh, then you can shoot a little faster. But again, I just want to make sure that our channels are cleaned out nicely and see if there's anything we need to do with the fish um, in the mold stage here before we seal it with that polyurethane. So, What's nice though, unlike uh, what I've had with the silicone molds, once they're made, they're made. Uh, you can, you know, cut big chunks out of them. You can cut, uh, you know, channels into them and, and everything like that if you want, you know, as far as letting the air escape. But, um, you know, these ones here I found that I can, you know, make designs in the fish and, and, uh, and whatnot as well. Uh, remember, coat the sprue hole as well as the top of it here. And sometimes I just get around uh, any excess, I kind of just paint around the outside in case there is any flashing. Um, you'll notice that I don't really have any um, channels for air or anything like that. This is precise enough, this plaster mold, two-piece molds are precise enough that they make a, de a very decent looking lure but they are imprecise enough, unlike an aluminum one, they're not airtight. So the air can actually press out. So that's all, uh, that's all we need there. I'll take over for this one, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> and again, we're just kind of greasing it up so that our plastisol is gonna fall out of the mold when we test it. <clears throat> It's important to not have too much down in the tails. You gotta get that excess out of there. If there is an imperfection in the mold, you can fill it in with this stuff, with the petroleum jelly. Okay, there's that. We make sure the top of this is lubricated as well and the edges nicely. We've test fit, by the way, our injector to make sure it's going to get a nice seal. Here is the hook slot for the small shad. And just set that in, set these halves together and clamp it down. You don't have to go crazy on the clamps, in fact you can do damage if you clamp it too hard but they make a nice stand uh, as well. So Now the exciting conclusion. Was it all for naught? Did I make a mold that would work? What's the point of life? All right, so we got hot plastic right out of the microwave. Put on our gloves, because this stuff will burn your skin right off. It is well over 300 degrees. So you must be careful. And inject. And just hold pressure. And just pressing down and holding. Make sure every cavity is full and that there's enough plastic in it. Okay. And I've warmed this mold up ahead of time because it looked like these had pretty large cavities in them because of the lure. So it was probably going to take um, a while to cool but right here you want to watch this while you're waiting so that you can um, fill that sprue back up because it will suck the plastic down and we just wait now so you're gonna to want to open it right now but don't go get a sandwich maybe a nice nectarine or uh, beef jerky perhaps Something that you'll take your mind off it and you won't be uh, tempted to open it right away because this needs to sit for quite a while. Smaller molds with uh, less, less massive lures in them, you can open them up really quickly. But uh, where we formed this mold, we want to let it cool, 
slowly and the point is is that your fish won't be uh, misshapen if it cools too fast it'll shrink the sides down and it'll look like all kind of funky so I don't know what this was but uh, it'll be wavy you'll see and I guess I'll just keep doing that so we'll be back um, for I guess for the other exciting conclusion to see if it worked right the mold is cool the moment we've all been waiting for anticipated with bated breath hush falls over the crowd All right, I know what everyone's thinking. What an ugly color. But I wanted one that would show up really well. And for our next trick, I will show you how to, <clears throat> how to paint them to make them look a little bit better. But those came out pretty nice. So there's just a little bit of flashing here, which gets pulled off really easily. Take these out, a little snip like that and there's your fish so there's a little bit of things you can trim off but not too bad for a four dollar mold a little less than that <clears throat> and this will swim just as well as the original let's see this guy here snip all right take off that little piece of flashing and there you go We've got our fin detail got our, you can see the gills the eye the top dorsal fin up here again I know it's an ugly color it's a remelt color it's not a special thing but uh, we don't need that because in the next video I'll show you how to paint these and make them look pretty because that's what it's all about so here are that little shad that I made take that sprue uh, that hook slot out cut off the little bit of the sprue cut those pieces tail up just a bit of a little a bit of, I don't know what that means but there it is with a hook slot in it and everything and I'll show you guys how I rig these up and how I use them after I finish them all right so there's the finished product they came out pretty nice I say I'd say these are what we started with here And, as I said, next video, this is what I'm going to show you how to do with them. Uh, yes, this one's a lighter base, but the results on the sides will still be the same. So, you get some nice shine and sheen in there and some sparkles and some patterns. And we'll get some eyes on them. And all for a whole lot less money than it would be buying a whole bunch of those. So, I hope you had fun. Please let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I'll see if I can not answer them for you. Don't forget! Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>